I mean, I could stand here for the rest of my life and I may never get another photo opportunity like that. Good morning everybody welcome back to the channel and welcome to Belize look at this I mean I love snow and everything but you just can't beat the jungle it's gorgeous so I'm staying at the Toucan Ridge Ecology and Education Society field station in Belize and I've been coming here for the past three years this is where I got my first internship it's where I got my first field job and uh, it's where I started my YouTube channel over a year ago so I, I love coming here it's one of my favorite places in Belize and since I've been here so long I've gone birding on the property over 300 times so I know where things like to hang out and one of the main places they love to hang out is this orchard here so if you're wondering why I'm in an open habitat it's because light in the jungle doesn't get sufficient until around like 9 or 10 o'clock if it's a bright sun so i'll start the day off in the orchard and then towards the middle of the day when the sun gets a little bit brighter i'll head towards the jungle and try to do some photography in there and then towards the end of the day when the light's getting lower because they dip below the mountains pretty early um, i'll just come back out and i'll do some photography in the orchard so wish me luck stay tuned hopefully we find something good Alright, so it's been pretty quiet in the orchard this morning, but I think I just figured out the reason why. Right in front of me is a massive Malay apple tree, and it's currently producing fruit. And there's a saying in the tropics, if you want to find the birds, follow the fruit. And for good reason, you have a lot of fruit-eating birds coming into these trees, but at the same time, there's a ton of insects. So you get a bunch of insectivores coming to feed off of the insects that are feeding on the fruit. So it's just one location that if you stand for, you know, an hour, two hours, you can get 30, 40 species if you're lucky. And with a tree this size and with the amount of fruit it produces, it's definitely possible. Right now it's a little bit early. I remember when I was here two years ago, it was at the peak of fruiting and there was just so much ripe fruit up there. We would just sit here in the morning and just watch all the birds go in and out. So it's really fun. Right now there's maybe about 12 or so species that I counted. All right, so it's starting to get pretty sunny out. I think I'm gonna head into the jungle and start doing some jungle birding. If you've seen my previous video on tips for forest bird photography, I talk about ecotones and the edge effect. And here at Trees, they have an awesome orchard. So most orchards that you can think of, it's usually just apple trees or just orange trees, just limes, whatever. But here they have a mix of different fruit. So what that means is throughout the year, they always have something fruiting or flowering, which is great for wildlife. And they've also stopped mowing the grass. Usually in most orchards that you see, all the grass is perfectly cut throughout the entire orchard. But here what happens is they only mow certain patches for little paths throughout the orchard and the rest is just tall grass. And when you allow grasses to grow and go to flower and seed, you attract way more insects and way more birds. So even in your backyard, if you wanted to find a way to increase biodiversity in your yard, just stop cutting your grass or at least stop cutting it in certain areas because that helps so much. So they have this awesome orchard that attracts a lot of wildlife and right along the edge of the entire orchard, there's this beautiful jungle habitat and what you see behind me, if you walk in maybe 30 seconds or so, you get this awesome little river behind me. Pretty much everything a bird would need or anything, pretty much any animal would need could be found in this small vicinity. And I've seen almost 250 bird species on the property. And what's interesting is that 
pretty much well over 90% of them I've seen either in the orchard or in the vicinity of the orchard throughout my time here. So it's definitely interesting. You know, you get this idea that you want to trek deep into the jungle, but the reality is most of the birds aren't there. Most of them are on the edge of the forest and in the orchard. So if I'm going into the jungle, I pretty much know I'm targeting forest specialists or I'm targeting mixed flocks. And I'll talk a little bit about mixed flocks later, but for now I'm going to start heading into the jungle and see what we can find. So I just hiked into the jungle about a kilometer or so. And one of my main strategies when I'm in the jungle is to just find one bird. It doesn't really matter which species it is, but so long as I can find one bird, there's usually other birds along with it. A lot of birds, especially the insectivores, they like to travel in these mixed feeding flocks. And sometimes you get five, 10, 15 species in the same flock, which is awesome. But what happens is they gather in these flocks because they like to move around the jungle throughout the day and kick up as many insects as possible. And obviously the more you have in the group, the better the success rate is, the more insects you're kicking up. So if you can find a mixed flock, that's probably one of your best chances to get a lot of great photos during the day. And you know, it's not really anything systematic. You can't say, oh, there's gonna be a mixed flock here. They just always move throughout the jungle. So you kind of have to move around a lot. I haven't found any mixed feeding flocks yet today, but I'm gonna keep looking. I'm gonna keep doing the trails. And in about an hour or two, I'm gonna start heading back to the orchard to get that nice afternoon light. So I just ran up top real quick to get some water and I also photographed the violet saber wing at the hummingbird feeder right next to the cabins. And in my opinion, I think the violet saber wing is one of the most gorgeous hummingbirds in the world. Purple is just such a rare color in birds. So seeing an entire hummingbird that's almost entirely purple, it's pretty impressive. But it's actually kind of annoying when it's near the feeders because it's so large that it just dominates the feeders and it just scares everything else away. But still really beautiful species. And that kind of gave me an idea. When I was in Ecuador, I spoke to you guys about the white whiskered hermit when I photographed it there. But Belize has two species of hermit and one of them is the long-billed hermit who loves to feed on this ornamental ginger plant. So here's an ornamental ginger plant, and this is when it's open. This is what the long-billed hermits go for. Uh, they have some other pods on here that are closed right now, but when the flowers are open, this is what they like to go for. And you can pretty much guarantee that any of them that are open, they're gonna get visited at some point by a long-billed hermit. And what's really interesting is that they visit these flowers on a loop. So if you see they visit a specific flower and you record the time at two o'clock, you can just wait till they visit it a second time and that's pretty much the time interval that they'll visit these flowers. So the time can vary quite a bit. I've timed some hummingbirds here coming every five minutes to the same flower. So as a photographer, that's awesome. You can just sit there and know that every five minutes you're gonna have a chance to photograph a hummingbird going to a flower. But then there's some individuals that come every 30, 40 minutes and those are obviously a little bit longer, but at least you can time it and know when the action is gonna happen. So I think I'm gonna visit one of these flowers and just hang out for a bit. There's clouds coming in, but they're kind of broken up. So there's sun peeking through every so often so the light isn't great at some times but the overcast is awesome so i'm just going to set up and hopefully get some hummingbird shots stay tuned all right so i'm in position flowers right behind me the long-billed hermit visited about 10 minutes ago so now i'm just waiting for him to do a second loop so i can time it i think though once these clouds break and i'm going to have pretty much full sun for a bit uh, i think i'm going to be in a pretty weird angle over here so i might actually move over to the other side uh, right behind me that's their wetland so I might go on to that side and shoot it this way because I think the sun angle is going to be a little bit nicer. But either way, I looked at it, you get pretty much really nice subject separation from the background. So it should be a nice shot either way. But uh, now I'm just waiting, going to time out his second loop and we'll see what we get. So I just clocked the hummingbird in at 36 minutes, which is a little bit long, but whatever. I'm still going to set up and try to get a nice photo. But what just happened was crazy. So I set my camera up and I pre-focused on the flower that the hummingbird was going to. And just a few minutes later, a little yellow butterfly came in and started going towards that flower. So I decided to take a few test shots because I thought it would be really cool if at some point the butterfly was on the flower just as the hummingbird was coming in. And when I was reviewing them, I didn't notice anything weird, but when I looked up, the butterfly was just there and it was just flailing. Its wings were flapping like crazy. And I was kind of 
confused as to what was happening. So I took a few test shots and then zoomed in and there was a praying mantis that grabbed it from the flower. So I looked back on my other photos and if you look on the left here, you can see this sneaky goose just slowly moving in from the side and he just waited there and the butterfly went to the right flower and he just snagged it. And what's insane is right now, the praying mantis is eating a butterfly right next to the flower that the hummingbird was visiting. So I have the potential to get a hummingbird flying to the flower while a praying mantis eats a butterfly. That's insane. So I'm setting up for that now. I wanna quickly run over and just take a few photos of this praying mantis uh, but I don't have my macro lens so I'll just use the 200 to 600 but oh my god if I can get this shot I'm gonna be over the moon and I fired off a bunch of shots and I think I have one. I'm looking on the back of the LCD screen here and I think there's one that works, but I think I can do better. I'm just waiting for him to come back now, but time is kind of against me. This praying mantis is eating the butterfly, obviously, so he's down to one wing and the rest of the body, he already ate the head and another wing. So I can maybe get two if I'm lucky, more sequences of the hummingbird coming back, but uh, I think, I have one more shot to get this. So here's the photo that I got from this sequence and I'm gonna to try to do better on the next one, but yeah, maybe like 45 minutes or so till the sun sets. So fingers crossed, I get another shot. Let's see what happens. He just came back and I think I got it. Oh my God, like that. I mean, I could stand here for the rest of my life and I may never get another photo opportunity like that. This is like, I'm speechless. And this, you know, the picture itself is not perfect. Like there's some things that I would like to change if if by chance the praying mantis was holding the butterfly a certain way so you can actually see the butterfly wing, that would have been awesome. But it, you know, I can't complain, this is insane. And, and to me, this is just what the jungle's all about. You can have this really obvious thing that's happening right in front of your eyes, like a hummingbird visiting a flower, but it's the things that are going on in the background, the struggles for life and death is just so cool. And, and to be able to capture that into one photo, I'm extremely grateful that I was able to do this. Oh my gosh. I went a little bit further out, but I think I'm actually gonna do a tight crop on this because I really want you to be able to tell that there's actually the praying mantis and the butterfly in the shot. I think like looking at it from further away from my camera, it kind of loses its effect a little bit. But uh, once I zoom in, it, yeah, definitely, uh, it definitely works a lot better. I'll have to see when I actually edit it, but that's, yeah, I don't know, I'm speechless. That's just amazing. Oh, I love the jungle. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. The praying mantis has pretty much done its meal. Uh, I have about an hour left or so in my 12 hours of birding. So I'm gonna try to take advantage of this last light that's hitting me now. Stay tuned, hopefully I get some more stuff. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Happy birding. Yeah.